Turn our hymnals to 106, 106. Mark the Herald Angels sing. <laughs>
Oh 
our sheep will be safe here, sheltered by his hill. <clears throat> it's cold and quiet and still. Let's build a fire so we'll be warm all night for many hours till the morning's light.
that as we continue to recognize and celebrate Jesus' birth, that we will do it in a biblical way and have a biblical understanding. I pray that you would speak through your word to our hearts this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. I love Christmas programs that focus on Jesus Christ and his birth into this world because really that's what Christmas is truly supposed to be about. Uh, Jesus is the real reason we have to celebrate at Christmas. And you should make sure you really celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ each Christmas. We're going to look at a few reasons why from the Word of God this morning, and I'm going to try to rush through here to get you out plenty of good time. Uh, if you have an outline there, you'll notice that we're going to be using various passages of Scripture, and we're going to be looking at some of those that record the account of Jesus' birth. And so we'll be in Luke chapter 1 and 2, and Matthew chapter 1 especially, but we'll see some others as well. So if you want to try to keep up a little bit, uh, the first uh, ones we're going to are Luke chapter 1 and Matthew chapter 1. As you're turning in your Bible there, I'll give you the first reason that you ought to really celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ each Christmas. And the first reason is so you reflect on the amazing realities of Jesus being born into this world. Something totally supernatural went on at the birth of Jesus Christ. Actually, there are several supernatural things that happened. It, it, it amazed the world at the time, and it really still ought to amaze us what took place, the realities of what happened at Jesus' birth. And we need to reflect on those amazing realities. As you reflect on the amazing realities of Jesus being born into this world, it will help you admire the majesty of who Jesus really is. Who is Jesus, really? Was he just a man? Really, that uh, is something that we need to get across to people. Many people think that's all that he was, as a man. That's all. But he was more than just merely a man. As we go to Luke 1, 26 through 35, I want you to notice, as we read these passages, that Jesus is God. And God took on humanity as well as being God. So God himself with a human body among us as a human being. That's who Jesus is. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin, a spouse to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary, and the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God, and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the Highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee, shall be called the Son of God. How could this happen? Well, you know, there are many things we focus on. 
at Christmas. We focus on the star. That was an amazing thing, was a supernatural thing that the star guided people to where the baby Jesus was born. We talk about a virgin. Normally a man and a woman are required to have a baby, to conceive a baby. A human man and a human woman. And here's a woman that isn't going to have a human man to help make that happen. And she wonders, how is this going to happen? And, and the angel says, God's going to make it happen in you. You'll conceive and have a child because the Holy Spirit of God's going to make it happen. That's a miracle. And uh, there are many that want to deny the virgin birth because it is a miracle, but it, it was a supernatural event. And, and we focus on other things that may have happened at the time and how uh, Mary was protected to have the child. But really, the biggest miracle of all was God took on humanity. What an amazing thought. I want you to notice something. Uh, again, in Matthew 1.23, he declares this, Behold, the virgin shall be with child, the angel says to Joseph, and shall bring forth the son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. As we talk about Jesus, we're talking about God himself came down to be with us. As you go to John chapter 1, it talks about this and, and another passage that I want to share as well, but John chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. The life was the light of men. And as we go on, we find out that that is talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. The very God himself who created this world, who spoke the worlds into being, Jesus made all things without him was not anything made that was made. That creator God came down, entered humanity, and took upon himself a human body while still being God. So as we talk about Jesus, we're talking about the greatest miracle of all, the God. That should just blow you away. That is utterly amazing. God with us. It will also help you appreciate the modesty of how Jesus came. And as I keep talking about modesty here, the, the thing that it is he comes meekly, he doesn't come arrogantly, he doesn't come in as a, a soldier, he doesn't come in as a king, he comes into our world, into a poor family. We know that they were poor because later on we're told they went to present a gift as was the custom after her purification. And she brought an offering that was for those who couldn't afford any more doves, pigeons, birds. That was for the poor folk. Now, it's an amazing thing. Jesus was born into the line of David, the kingly line, but there were a whole lot of people born into the kingly line that never became the king. Not all of them lived in the palace. In fact, Joseph was a carpenter. And Mary didn't have enough to buy the more expensive offering, so she had to give birds for her offering. 
Jesus came in among poor folks humbly. And instead of having a big <coughs> choir announcing, he did have angels speak to some shepherds, and the shepherds go about announcing to those around them that Jesus was born. So in such modest way he comes, humbly he comes, into this world. We're told in Philippians 2, 5 through 8, let this time be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but he made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in passion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. God himself, who created this world, set aside his kingly robes, came into the world in a poor family, without a lot of fanfare, in order that he could die and would die for you and me who are sinners. Now that is amazing. Stand in awe and thanksgiving at who Jesus is, the God man. Second reason why. Is so you recall the actual reasons for being Jesus being born into this world. We've already sort of touched on that, haven't we? But there are a couple of things that we want to just call our attention to this morning. Why did Jesus come this way? Well, first of all, to show you his love. There's a verse that just about everybody here, I'm sure, knows. And you can help me quote it this morning. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have the last God loved the world so much he loved you so much that he gave his son. He gave him to die for our sins that we might have forgiveness of sin and eternal life and not perish in our sins. John, 1 John 4, 9-10 says, And this was manifested the love of God toward us because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him. Here in His love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation, the atonement, the payment for our sins. God loves you so much that if you'd have been the only sinner in this world, He would have sent His Son to show you His love and save you from sin. That brings us to the second part. To save you from sin. Even in the announcements that were given by those angels, you go back to Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, as the angel spoke to Joseph, he said, And she shall bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. It was necessary for Jesus to come to save sinners from their sins. Luke chapter 2 and verse 11 is spoken to uh, not Joseph this time, but to uh, the shepherds. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior which is Christ, the Lord. 
later on in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul writes to Timothy and he says, This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came in the, into the world to save sinners of whom he claims to be chief. Jesus' motive for coming and the motive for God sending him was his love. He came with a mission and his mission is to save you from your sin. How does that happen? When you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ to save you because of who he is and what he did for you in suffering and paying your penalty on the cross for your sins. And then rising and having victory over sin and death. When you put your faith in Him and what He's done, He saves you from your sin. It says, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That implies that you call in faith, believing. Whosoever believeth in Him will not perish, but have everlasting life. If you put your complete trust, complete faith in the Lord Jesus Christ to save you from your sin. That's why He came. Realize and accept that Jesus desires you for himself. He loves you so much, he wants you to be his own. And he's trying to win you completely over to himself by his love and salvation. Once you are his own, he doesn't just want a part of you. He doesn't just want to save you just barely to make it into heaven. He really wants you to be his own completely and to enjoy that relationship between yourself and him. He wants your whole heart. He wants you to have victory over sin and all the blessing that he can give. He came for you. Thirdly, third reason to really celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ each Christmas is so you return an appropriate response to Jesus being born into this world. Jesus, the God-man, came to save you, so what should you do? Well, should be obvious you should accept Jesus as your Savior. As you go to John chapter 1 it tells us that this one who created the world and came into the world as light and to give life he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, his own people, his own nation, the Jewish people and his own received him not. What a tragedy! Typically, that was the response of the Jewish people. We won't have him as our Savior. We won't respond to him as our God. And they wouldn't receive him. They rejected him. But as many as received him, to them gave he power, the right, the authority to become the sons or children of God, even to them that believe on his name. And that's still true. As many as received him as their Savior who believe on him, they are given the power, the right, the authority to become children of God. He wants you to receive Him. Also, adore Jesus as your Lord. In Luke chapter 1, verse 46, Mary says, My soul to magnify the Lord. When she realized who Jesus is, when she started comprehending why he came, 
her response was, my soul doth magnify the Lord. The psalmist said this, oh magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. That's worship. Bringing exaltation, bringing praise, adoring the Lord Jesus Christ. And that ought to be our response. Hey, notice, as you go through the accounts, the angels, what did they do? They magnified the Lord. Mary, we just saw it, she magnified the Lord. What did the shepherds do? They went about praising God, magnifying the Lord. We're aware that later on, not on that very night, the Magi came. And they presented gifts to him and magnified the Lord Jesus Christ. If all of these magnified the Lord, shouldn't you? And adhere to Jesus as your Lord. When I say adhere, that means comply, follow him. Connect with him as your Lord. What's the Lord? The Lord is the one, really, the scriptures indicate as the owner and ruler. And you need to follow Jesus as the owner and ruler of your life. Romans 14, 8 through 9. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. Or whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord, both of the dead and living. As I said earlier, Jesus wants all of you. Let Jesus save you from your sins. And then give him your complete love and life in you. So this Christmas, make sure that you reflect on the amazing realities of who Jesus is in his birth. What happened in his birth. And also recall the reasons he came. <coughs> To show you his love and to save you from sin. <coughs> and respond to him by accepting him as your Savior, worshiping him as your God, and following him as the owner and ruler of your life. May this kind of celebration truly bring you a merry Christmas. Father, if there's a soul here today that has not yet put their faith in Jesus to save them from their sin, I pray that this day you would remind them and press them to understand that the reason Jesus came is to save them from their sin. <coughs> Give them the faith to believe. Bring them to the place that they'll call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. Trusting completely in you. I pray for those who have been saved that we would all reflect upon the amazing God that Jesus is and that we serve. And Father, may we be filled with such awe and gratitude that we willingly will just completely turn our lives over to Him and desire to please Him and serve Him and magnify Him as we are. Pray that if there's sin in our lives that is standing in the way of us having the right kind of response to who Jesus is and what He did, I pray that you would 
convince us of that sin and bring us to the place where we repent of it and, and confess it and make it right with you and then grow us, make us heralds for Jesus Christ. I pray in Jesus' name. We have a closing song, 120, Come with me, children, O come, one and all. I would ask that you stand together as we sing this, please. We always are willing to be there for somebody that needs help. To know how to be saved or just want somebody to be with them as they go through this and talk to the Lord. Maybe you need some further scriptures. We'd love to, to do all we can to help you. And dear Christian, if there's a spiritual need that you have, we'd like to be there for you as well. You can come as we sing or you can meet us after the services, but please don't put it off. If God has spoken to your heart, let him have his way. 120, come with me, ye children. Oh.